what one of the most successful franchises in Hollywood is today? I find it very interesting. It's actually Marvel Comics. And you probably realize it without knowing it, but they have turned a lot of the comic superheroes of yesterday into these major movie events. I mean, there's been, what, 15, 40 Batman, something like that, and, you know, 12, 13 Spider-Man. And, but it's absolutely amazing how many of these superhero kind of things are out there. It would seem that people really like the idea of a superhero. And that's true probably of most of us, isn't it? We, we like somebody who is supernatural, that has supernatural power. You ever wondered what it would be like to have a superpower? Would you want to be, you know, faster than a locomotive? You know, able to stop a speeding bullet, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound? Would you want to have x-ray vision? Be invisible? But here's a better question. Rather than what superpower maybe you'd like to have, how would you use it? See, as you know, not everyone who has supposedly superpowers uses them necessarily for good. We lift up and elevate those superheroes that seem to. But there's a lot of temptation, is there not? To paraphrase something that was said a number of years ago, power corrupts. And great or absolute power corrupts greatly. I don't think most of us realize how great the temptation would be if we truly had a superpower. We're selfish by nature, at least I am. Anybody else here besides me? Okay, a couple of you, okay. But we're selfish by nature. And it would be a natural instinct, I think, for most of us to move upon using that superpower for our own agenda rather than serving a greater agenda. That's part of what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at some men, the disciples of Jesus, who were given superpowers. And we're going to take a look at how they were used with those superpowers. If you haven't done so already, I'd ask you to turn to Luke chapter 9. It's been a while since we've been in the book of Luke. 